You alright everyone, um, this video is just going to be showing you how to take a pencil drawing and put it into a line drawing using GIMP. Um, sorry if the microphone's a bit poor quality, I'm doing this while I'm at work, I'm on night shift, there's no one else in the building. Um, you might hear some little noises in the background now and again, that would be from the air condition which is right above my desk. Um, I do apologise again for the mic quality, it's just a uh, me works headset. <laughs> Uh, for this, all I'll be doing is taking this drawing, it's just a pencil drawing taken from Google search, and I'm going to be changing it into a line drawing using the pass tool on GIMP. Um, just a quick little show here. Set your line up, then stroke path, solid, and you want to practice with these uh, line settings. So that's stroke three. So that actually work there? Yep. Knock this down to a stroke two. Knock this down to a stroke one. So you can see the difference in thickness between the lines. Obviously you can change it. Uh, for the main outline, I might try stroke five. I think that'll be a good thickness that. That's just there as a template for myself, so I know like three, two, one, five will be the main lines I'm using. Five for the outline, one for like the detail, the little creases in his trousers and that, around the buttons. And two and three we're mixing it up around the eyes, the faces and all that. First off you want to be making your image. Make sure we, if you press right click on it, add alpha channel. If it hasn't already got alpha channel, make sure you click that and you'll be able to change it into a PNG image by going to layer, transparency, and color to alpha. So as you see now, it removes all the white background. So if I delete that background, just so you can see, that's what it looks like. <coughs> I want the white background on though, so I can see what I'm actually doing. You can change this, uh, the colour of the image as well. Just going on to that and changing what you want. You've got to make sure you have it selected first. Yeah, you can change the, the colour of it. It's better to try and get a light colour. I'm going to keep it like a grey colour just so I can see what I'm actually doing when I'm putting my. Uh, line work over the top of it so that'll be alright like that so you can see the image is still there but it's a bit faded so when I go to put my line work over the top it'll be darker so I know where I've done where I need to do sort of thing you don't want to draw directly on this image you want to create a new layer doesn't matter uh, uh, I <laughs> create a new layer make sure it's a transparent layer and make sure it's on top and you can double tap it to give it a, uh, a name. So I'm just going to call this one Draw. Because that's the, the image I'm going to be drawing on. And then you just go around tracing your image. Um, I will cut this video down a bit or I might speed it up. And I will cut back in every now and again when I've got something to talk about. But for the time being, I will speed it up. Ah. Before I start as well, there's different ways to do your lines. I'll quickly show you on the side as well. So you've got um, your straight lines, which I've just done like that to that stroke path. But if you get the places where you need to do like curves, if you do the, press your, your start line, then hold in your second line, you can drag it. And that gives you your curve line. If you want to be more curved, just move these pieces. And it gives you a different curve lines you know what I mean you can warp the line wherever you want it then go to stroke path and stroke so you can say how to do straight lines and curve lines there is other ways of doing it as well where say you've got multiple curves in it you can bend it that way stroke path like that 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 
And again, hold it in. And if you need to adjust anything, you can just go back to that line and just what you need to do. It's fairly simple to do. That's the end of the line, so that line won't, won't make a difference until you start your next line. You want to go in the previous one and stroke path. So that's how I'll be doing the curves while doing this. If you do an error and you want to delete this, just Control and Z will delete the last thing you've done. Or you can go in here somewhere. Um, ah, you can delete it by doing it that way either. <laughs> or you can just use a eraser tool and just rub out what you need. But I'm not going to bother with that because that'll be getting deleted later on anyway. <laughs> As I say, the main thing I'm going to be using is this tool, the stroke path tool, or the path tool. You can um, use this in many different ways as well, not just the way I've just done it there, not just with the straight line. Instead of just going to stroke, you can either change it to a pattern, or you can change what tool is used. So I'm using the paintbrush, but you can change it to uh, the airbrush, the pencil, you know what I mean? You can change it to any of them. I don't want that, I want keep it as that. After zooming in as well, it looks like stroke fire is going to be a bit too thick. Stroke four. What's that going to look like? Stroke four looks alright. Stroke five might be a bit too thick. I think I'll go with stroke four on it then. It's a good thing to have a little test on the side of your screen. You've got plenty of space. You know what I mean? You can have to play around with it. Get used to the different things. Alright, so back to my draw image. That's what I'm going to be drawing on. And now I'm going to be starting. And already you've seen there that line's away from the image, so just click on that line and put it the way you want to be. Say number four is going to be all right the thickness of this image. You can go around the whole image and then come back into it just certain lines if you want. Or you can do what I'm doing and do a little bit at a time. That way, if you do any errors, it's easier to uh, fix while you're on the go sort of thing. I am only using the keyboard and mouse doing this as well, so if you have got a, a drawn tablet or something, that'll be a lot quicker and easier for you to do. But like I say, I am at work, so I'm just doing this with the keyboard and mouse. But 
but I would love to have a uh, proper drawing tablet to do it on now. That's going to be a thin line, so I'll leave that for now. I want to try and get all the lines done at the same size to start with. So I'm doing like line with the thickness of uh, four, I think it is at the minute. I want to try and get all the uh, the, f the size four lines done first. You know what I mean? If you've done what I've just done there, where I've done four points, and then I've edited them, and if you want to continue doing the same line, make sure you click on your last line when you're done. So make sure you click on that point to continue where you left off from, sort of thing. You'll see every now and again as well, after I've done a line, I will click on the move tool. That's just to take the marker off so I can see where I've gone. That's all I'm doing there, so you don't have to do that, but I do it just so I can see where I've, like the, the line I've just done sort of thing. So there, you can see the line, but if you want to see it clearer, just click on another another tool. I always click on Move Tool. You can click on anything you want, really. It's just to remove those markers off the page, that's all. That's all that's for. Another good thing about using the move tool, it deletes your last mark sort of thing. So if you start a new line, I'll show you now. Go to where you want, do your work you want. So there, that's stroke pass working. Now if I want to start from the shoulder, because I haven't done a move tool, I'm still on the same tool, it might put a line going to where I'm going, which it has. So that's why it's good to use the move tool, and then you start your next move in a, with a, a whole separate line by itself sort of thing. Should be able to get that in one piece. Good. 
cold out there at night and all that. It's 12 o'clock at night now, and uh, we forecast snow in the northeast. It's uh, 7th of February today. <coughs> we forecast snow for the next 10 days, so it's going to be nice. Work the night shift and get to feel all the benefits of the cold. <laughs> Could be home, took a bit bead, nice and warm, but nope, got to work even so. I might turn this into a two part vid. I do all the drawing on one video, and I might actually colour it in on a second video. Not too bothered about uh, doing colour tonight. See there, I'm not going to get the shape I want just by using the two dots. So what I'll do, I'll put one dot there. And put another dot here. Now that line's gone all over because I've moved this. So let's adjust that. And that gives us the exact shape I want. Noise. <laughs> normally have some music on in the background when I'm doing this sort of work on the computer but I'm normally just like trying to cash and all that so I can't really play that because YouTube will then block the video so I might I probably will I'll uh, dub over in the background some easy listening music sort of thing but YouTube friendly <laughs> the worst thing about copyrights not making no money off this channel, I'm not intending making any money off the channel, but still I don't want to get uh, copy strikes on it because it stops uh, like a larger audience seeing the video. I know there's been a fair few times when I've been stuck on swing using the GIMP or like Photoshop and that. That'd be handy to have a certain video to watch. And some of them are just don't show because people put whatever music they want over them. I'll use a thin line. Come together, man. It's easy once you've, uh, once you've had a few calls at us. Ah, uh, see? Because I didn't end the line. <laughs> end the line, start afresh. Once I've had a few goals, I, there's a fair few things on GIMP that's uh, very easy to pick up on. I find GIMP a lot easier to use than what uh, Photoshop is, to be honest. Plus, it's a free program, so you kind of go wrong with that. I know there is other ways of getting Photoshop for free, like, but. <laughs> Chest shape a bit more. It's the best thing about doing the the line drawings, all the type of pencil drawings. You, if it's your own drawing, you might have done like a mistake or something. You kind of edit where you can do it in here. You know what I mean? You can pull lines where you want them and all that. You can change the curvature of certain items and all that. It's not bad at all. I 
and like I say, this image was taken off Google, but it's exactly the same process for your own image. All you gotta do is scan it into the computer, then load your image up into, uh, into GIMP and do exactly the same process. Or if you've got a, a tablet, the good thing to do is open it and draw ex like straight onto the uh, game program itself. Just add a little line in there, there's a little breakable, breakable line in there. But you can um, load the tablet up and go into your file settings and all that. And as long as GIMP recognizes the tablet, you can draw straight on the tablet with your stylus and that. And that's what I want, to be honest. I want a decent tablet where I, where I can do that, draw straight onto the program itself. Instead of having to draw on paper, import it over onto the way. Aye. Instead of having to do five different steps to do the same step sort of thing. Draw it, cover it, transfer it onto here. But if I draw on tablet, I can do it all in one go. It's a bit confused at the minute because you're on with all the extra details and all the inlay, but it's getting there. I'll just pull this image off uh, Google just because it was a simple image to be honest. Uh, there's not too much detail on it. Just so I can quickly show you the way I do it sort of thing. I didn't want to go into massive detail over uh, I don't know if I swore there, I'm sorry if I did. <laughs> I do try and stop myself from swearing now and again. Um, just gotta think about what I'm saying, that's all. I've got a really bad habit of, with me swearing, so I do try and calm it down sometimes, but some do slip through now and again. I do apologise. Yeah, like I was saying, I'm trying to do a less complicated image, just where it's like straightforward lines, just so you can get the basic understanding of um, how the whole process is done, sort of thing. And you can carry it over onto your own image, image um, make it as complicated or as detailed as you want.
save there that's my last line in there so I try to draw that line in there we'll have another diagonal one going across but we skip on click on the, the close line to us and continue that one over and it's not going to let us <laughs> I've just said that it's not going to let us but you can you can do it definitely <laughs> making a fool of me I think that's all the outline done. Buttons, creases, buttons, creases, cravat, creases, face. Alright, that's the outline done. So, just move that out of the way for a second. Any mistakes, anything that looks out of order. Alright. As I've just chose a different file there, I was like moving that one around. You need to remember if you're doing stuff like that, to click back on your draw one before you start drawing again. Otherwise all you're gonna do is draw over the top of the original image, the original sketch. So just make sure you click back on what you need to do sort of thing. Get this hairline in place, then start on the face. Um, I'm going to drop the size of the line down as well a bit, around the eyes, nose and mouth, hair, cravat. Then I'll drop it down another size when I do the buttons. So I'm going to drop it down one size, I reckon. Number three should be alright. Ah, number three is not too bad. You can say there is a slight between the three and four. Obviously, if you want to do a fine line drawing, you want to drop it down. You can drop it down even more, you know what I mean? You can use like a, probably a three for the outline and a one for the detail. Well, that's totally up to your uh, preference, that sort of thing. Because I've used the three, it should automatically use the last number you used. I was going to spape it to this video up and uh, double over my voice now and again, but. I think I'll just let this uh, video run through. I don't think it's going to take that long to do, actually. So 
so what that looks like. I think that might be a bit too thick, that. I'm going to drop it, the size down a bit. I think three was going to be a little bit too thick on the eyes there, uh, wouldn't look like it was uh, heavy eyed or black eyed. The worst thing about doing it this way, I'm doing, I'm doing a Google image, not my own image, so I don't know what the artist was intended when drawing certain stuff, you know what I mean? At least if it's your own drawer, you know exactly how you want it, you know which bits you can and can't change, sort of thing. So for this, I'm just changing what I need to as I go on, sort of thing. thicker and this path thinner. So I'll do this the way I am in a bit. Oops. Okay that is a size two on that line. I think size three on this line. Sand out a little bit more. I'll say that three for now because that'll be uh, blacked out later on anyway. This one I wanted to. The mouth I wanted to as well. That's the thing I keep forgetting. When I've cleaned my line, I always forget to press it again to start a new line. So I was moving the pitch right out of the place. Should get 
Tai um monco. Show. I didn't want to do that. Hope this line doesn't break here. Yeah, it's not too bad. I want the cravat thicker colour, there, uh, thicker line. One line, see what that looks like. God, there's just like creases in it, you know what I mean? Cravat pin. Not as though there are two line, I reckon. One might be a little bit too thin, but. Spot on. <laughs> ah, two sides are spot on on that. So I use a two on the buttons, two on the seam there, and a one on the creases. Handy being able to pull lines wherever you want them to look as well.
Sorry if I'm not talking all the time, it's just <laughs> what I'm doing is it's exactly the same stuff over and over, so there's nothing much more to uh, talk about at the minute. Two sentences. Sorry about that phone going off there. Like I say, as I am at work, and I've, uh, every now and again I've got to do a check call just to let them know that I'm alive. <laughs> and I forgot to let them know, so the phone made me sure I am alive. You disturb this man, stop ringing me. <laughs> Also, as well, when you're doing this sort of thing, you need to remember that the save your file is a PNG file, so you can come back into it later on and edit it. <laughs> um, is that all the creases done or not? Shoulder crease, elbow crease, finger creases. Then about 10 buttons. This one, I want a thicker line. Took that right in, though. Button, button. Ah, there was a uh, elbow crease one right there. And there's the snow just started. Just look out the camera there, there's uh, snow flying down like mud. <laughs> it's gonna be nice getting out work tomorrow, snow all out. Test down here on the thickness of the line for the buttons. Ten points if you know what these are called, what goes over the shoes. It's quite a pretty funny name, really. <laughs> I don't know what they are because I had to hunt them out for a uh, dress costume before. Right. I went to a fancy dress costume as this character before. And my wife went as a um, the character what accompanies him, and even that's got a funny name. So another ten points if you know what uh, a gangster showgirl is called. Another button there or not? Can't tell. Um, ah, I got an auto for two buttons. I'm not sure if it is or if it's a mistake, you know what I mean? I gotta see it's not my drawing.
doesn't ever like that or not. Looks weird having those two there. I'm going to delete that. Didn't like it. Keep two but uh, single button on. Mind you, just double press a lot of the chest and I'm gonna have to put that button on. They just don't line up properly, that's all. <laughs> Being good as if you had like a rose pet on his uh, lapel, sort of thing. Could look like probably like gangster type of thing, you know what I mean? Like the Godfather type of uh, character. as well. Alright, so that's the image done anyway. Zoom out. So we take that away. See, so you got lots of straight lines for when you can come to her, clearing in your computer and sort of shite. If I put them down side by side. So yeah, da, 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 da. So there you go, you can take your pencil drawing into a line sketch. That's doing me head in there, to get rid of that scent. Thick brush will do better. Yeah. So that's how to take a pencil drawing into a line sketch using GIMP. As I say, it's kind of easy to do. Um, I think that took, what, 40 minutes? Not too bad at all. Then if you go to the original image, press the uh, delete on it. Put your image where you want it. Centralize it just for this. And when you go to uh, save as, uh, export as, just remember to have it as a PNG. I'll show you what. Touch uh, from the desktop. Delete that. Delete that. So I've just saved it there. Open it up, and it's a white background. But because it's a PNG background, transparency, color alpha, and it'll give you just the line. So when you do come to colour in, uh, dark purple suit. I want more blue than that. <coughs> there you go. So when you're painting it colouring in sort of thing, you're not covering the lines. If you didn't do that, and you went to paint it, you would have to be careful because you're going to cover the lines right away. 
So what you gotta do it there. If you want to, if you do want a color it sort of thing, because it's a PNG image, just go to layer, transparency, color that alpha, and it'll delete all the white. Then add white layer by itself and put it underneath your drawing. And make sure you paint this one. Again, when you can double tap it, call it paint. So when you come to color it in, it'll only cover the underneath image sort of thing. And I mean, it won't go over the black line. <laughs> Wrong button. That's how you would colour it in. So it's a pretty easy process uh, to take it from pencil to line art, and then take it from your line art to colour it in by yourself, sort of thing. Anyway, thanks for watching. This is the end of the video. Hopefully, it hasn't been too long. Um, if there's anything you want to explain, and feel free to drop in the comments below if you want to see any more videos, hints, tips, sort of things feel free to uh, ask in the comments below as well and I'll try and get back as many as I can. Um, I have been using GIMP for a lot of years. I do know a fair bit there, uh, fair few processes on it sort of thing. I've used it to do all my channel art. I've used it to do stuff there, uh, channel art for other people. Facebook banners, Twitter banners, yeah, icons. Any art you see on my channel I've used GIMP for from thumbnails as well. So if there's any questions you want to ask regarding using GIMP, feel free to uh, drop a comment in below thanks for watching i'll catch us all later bye